Okay, it's very important in this second unit to be able to write balanced equations and indicate the subscripts of all reactants and products. So this is a short little video explaining the different subscripts and when you can expect to use them. S stands for solid, and as we learned in the first unit, ions held in a crystal lattice experience strong ionic attractions, and that holds the particles close together. And so ionic compounds are typically solid. If water is present, though, you need to consider the solubility of those ionic compounds, which we will um, discuss in a later lesson when we get to double displacement reactions. So for now, it's enough to know that low solubility ionic compounds, otherwise known as precipitates, are also solids. But again, I'll emphasize and teach that when we get to the double displacement lessons. All of the metals as elements, so when they're just by themselves, not combined with any other element in a compound, so just all metals when they're elements are solids except for mercury. So you'll recall mercury is a liquid. And take a look through the non-metals and metalloids. Some non-metals are also solid um, and all the metalloids are. Now L stands for liquid. And you may be thinking sometimes there might be some confusion between liquid and aqueous. A liquid is a pure substance. So the element mercury is just mercury. All of those particles are identical mercury atoms. And mercury is a liquid at room temperature. Elemental bromine, so Br2, is also a liquid. And those are the two elements that are liquids at room temperature. We're definitely going to encounter water in various reactions, and when it's written as a reactant or product in the equation, H2O has the state L for liquid. Unless perhaps it's a combustion reaction, so if a reaction's happening at high temperatures, then uh, it won't be raining on that fire. It'll be water vapor, so we would use G for gas. But typically, we'll see water as a liquid. Another common molecular compound um, that is a liquid at room temperature is H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. Now beyond those two, I would expect you to remember those, beyond those there are other, com there are other molecular compounds that are liquids, but you'll always be told that in the question. Okay, uh, G stands for gas, and you'll remember the other diatomic elements that are also gases. Hydrogen gas, nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, fluorine, and chlorine. So when these elements appear on their own as reactants or products, they are diatomic and they are gases. Now non-metal oxides, these compounds will show up as reactants and products in different reactions. Non-metal oxides are typically gases. So Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, nitrogen dioxide, dinitrogen tetroxide. Anytime you have a nonmetal with oxygen, expect that compound to be a gas. So G is the subscript. And AQ stands for aqueous. Aqueous really means dissolved in water. So when you're wondering if water is present in the beaker where this reaction is happening, if you see a reactant or product with the subscript AQ, that definitely means that water is the solvent <clears throat> and these substances are dissolved in water. So when you have an ionic compound in a, in a reaction and, the, and water is present, either as H2O in an act, as an actual reactant or product, or you see substances that are aqueous solutions already, then you need to consider whether the ionic compounds dissolve in water. And again, this is something we will review or, dis or teach for the first time actually in double displacement reactions. So solubility guidelines which are provided on your test reference sheet will be used to determine the solubility of the ionic compounds. Sometimes they'll be a precipitate, in which case we'll use S for solid, <clears throat> but when the solubility is high, for those ionic compounds in water, then we'll be using AQ. So this will come at a, a later lesson, but it's summarized in the note for you now. And the last substance that we anticipate being aqueous, you've already learned about aqueous acids. So again, look for that hydrogen up front and 
um, AQ to follow. Okay, that's it for the subscripts.